close really close at the um, at the uh, swing platform that we have and uh, because it's like I said in the quarter uh, our swing platform produces awesome results better than most day traders do better than most successful day traders so um, and it's really low risk totally different oil is it holding up here is my chart frozen or is oil actually holding that oh it's holding nice okay here we go so I'm looking for a strong one and a quarter Royal Caribbean's flagging Google DRX so on our swing side these are the alarms are going off I'm not too sure there's a moving average on DRX stochastic RSI on Google and a moving average uh, crossover on RCL Royal Caribbean I'll look at those in a bit Arms are going off on Juno. So DRWI is holding up here. I'm surprised, actually, to be honest with you. Well, maybe not. I spoke too soon. Cal is holding up, up just under 6%. NVAX is holding up so far, up just over 10%, 11%. Uh, INO is going to be taken off the board. LITE, our swing is doing well. And US Oil is holding really close to the target for today, too, by the way. But it's the intersection that I'm most interested in there. Rosie the Gold Algo, by the way, the new. Uh, the newest generation of that algorithm is due before the 15th. I would expect it in the next few days, but Rosie's getting uh, get to the point of uh, epics. Deliverability and charting. Okay, what else is going on out here, guys? Anything? Scanners are pretty quiet at open here. DRWI is struggling with VWAP there. It's just lost its VWAP. And in VC, I didn't put up on the board, but little Cal is coming off there. It's been a tough swing that one so far. One of the few that's struggling on our list. I mean, we're still green, but barely. Backs coming off. Struggling with VWAP. LITE is just fantastic. Oh, so oil's magically holding that support line there for the channel. This is the decision line, by the way. And then this is the decision line for the downward channel. It gets into that downward channel, you can expect some serious uh, volatility. But it looks like it's going to hold here. The buyers are coming in. So I'm looking for an add on my CL position from this morning. I probably won't add until rate. I don't normally take a, posi a position right before the EIA report, but I'm, it's one tenth. It's not. Uh, it's not significant. So my one tenth buy is at forty-seven seventy on CL. 
so I'm underwater by two cents or something. DRWI lost VWAP, hasn't regained it. Calum lost VWAP. Calum will be fine, I think. And VAAX lost VWAP. So now what you're watching for, if it does get uh, a little mobile here, is whether or not it can get through VWAP. A lot of our more experienced traders will be shorting at VWAP every time. VWAP on my charts is the orange. Especially if VWAP sits on a 25, so in other words, 75%, 150%, or 100 and a quarter, 150%. That's kind of ideal situation. So I don't know, I didn't check, but I think VWAP is likely right at 75%. So on this one minute candle here on the test, that was a good short here and here. So the last three minute candles. Cala. So as you see here it comes to VWAP now. Squeeze momentum is trending down on the one minute. So there's definitely uh, pressure. Right, these trending little stock RSI is just barely curling up. So advantage to the bears in a big way here. Here's the VWAP test here. So yeah, it's at 72% of VWAP. Probability is to the bears, but um, we'll see. You don't know. At, op at open, it's really tough to say. And it's such a small stock. you got kids in uh, high school in their math class trading this. VWAP. Tape on spies looking health here. I think oil's pulling it up a bit here.
CVNA, the uh, tape is really strong here. This should be almost it for DRWI if you're in it, but I'd be really careful here. shares a lot be a lot of high school day traders calling mama here soon telling her how good they are on that one just trying to keep them in perspective for you I'm the one that gets the emails and the DMs and stuff about these uh, Dollar momos in the morning. It looked so good. Poof. Oh, yeah, right. It's dangerous, yes. Very dangerous. Do not blow brains out. So DRWI came back from the brink here, trading 75% on just under, just under VWAP. I'll actually look at it over a dollar here. Netflix, another one of our swings. There's a MACD crossover happening right now on the daily. So DRWI didn't get to review up there. Five minute candles, let's take a look. Here it goes. Well, it's just about. Here it goes. I mean, it held this long, it should go now. At some point here. There's, uh, well, there's a switch of the candle coming right now.
sorry, right now it's coming. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see Momo on this candle here. For those that are new in the room, if you hear that snoring, it's not me. It's Monkey the Bulldog. I've been accused of falling asleep on the mic, so I just wanted to make sure it's clear. <laughs> and holy does he get going sometimes. Oh. Okay, come on, let's do this. I need a good cracker. I trade the day trades for fun, right? Our, uh, our real, well, I, I gotta be careful how I say that, but yeah. Our real profits are in the algorithmic model trading now, but um, anyway, predictability is in our swings. Day trading, I guess I did beat my swings last quarter. And VAX is holding up really well here. So what else is going on out there, guys? Anything that I need to know about? See, there's that candle. Here it comes. So it's at, it's just past the 75%. So I'm looking for past the 100% over a high of day. It's about buck 25. Wow. So that's my entry over a buck 25, not a dollar. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, I'm not really with it here. So over 100% over a buck 25. I'll start to scale. Stock car size starting to cross up, MACD is trending up, and we got the squeeze momentum trending up, and it is a very terrible, ugly piece of crap stock, so be very careful. Like I, you know, with my account, so I would run maybe 3,000 shares on my first hit and, you know, scale 3,000 at a time kind of thing. Um, so, you know, like nothing relative speaking you know important but you know if you get one that gets going you can you can do well but they can take that away on you very quickly when they halt it so careful careful gala on the turn how's oil doing are we getting rich come on oil uh, it's having a hard time at that intersection. But that's the way it works with these channels. There's the decision. So the machines just wait for the human traders to say, are we going, you know, the machines are just saying, okay, humans, you want to go up or you want to go down? And then they just execute uh, thy desire of the humans. The humans don't really know that. But here we go. All right, let's do this. I could use a new car. George Orwell. As it relates to uh, the markets, the machines have taken over. The humans just don't realize it quite yet. Wow, that was close. So what do we got left in this five minute chart? We have just under a minute, so here comes the pressure. I'll be traveling today too, so I might be in and out. Forty seconds left, you'll start to see pressure really come in here. This is a rollover point. This is where the um bulls that are panicking, weak hands leave and the um, testosterone comes in. It's lost a few up too, so it's very bad. The candle looks like crap. Those long tails to the top aren't a good idea. They're not on your side as a bull. But it's holding up, so well, there go. there's the pressure. How much we got left? 
we got three seconds left. Here it comes. Get ready. Wow, it actually held. That's kind of amazing. Hmm. Okay, live to see another five minute candle here. We'll see what happens. Maybe not. The bulls aren't. Oh, well, uh, well, Cala. There we go. There's the turn there and the volume. What was that at? 1580 or so? 81, 83. We're in at 1555, I think. So. Our buy is secure, but from a technical perspective, not from a realistic perspective, but um, I'm just not real confident in this one. I might roll out of this one today when we do the review over lunch. LITE is still strong, and oil, what happened? Now, if oil, by the way, loses this and goes down into this channel, you can expect the markets to, you know, you'll want to buy some VIX for sure. Nothing else going on out there. I mean, yesterday you guys were quiet too. Today you're quiet. Discipline. I shouldn't complain. I'm proud. I'm not complaining. Uh, we've got an OTC just flying SWHI. Wow, look at the pressure on DR DRWI. Careful, careful if you're long there. If anybody's long, they haven't admitted it in the room. Very quiet room last few days. Kurt, you've done your job. Okay, great. Here we go, 25%. This one can fly, just so you know. I do know the stock. AMD, another strong day on the tape. This uh, little OTC uh, play here, man, it, when it gets going, she can go. So let's see it rip. I haven't had a good OTC play for a few weeks. <laughs> VAX. It just. <sighs> Gala. Nice. There we go. Good candles. Not excellent, but good. LITE. I'm just going to. Get it off the board. We're in great shape there. WTI crude. So here's how I do it. I put up the one minute chart with all these lines. And then uh, the uh, people that know it all on social media can complain about all my lines. But uh, what I'm doing is I am um, not only is it artistic, but I am comparing the one minute chart to my algorithm. And why am I doing that? Because, you know, are you really supposed to trade on a one minute chart? What you'll you give that's the best way to put it. It's a GPS. You know, it's like the roadways. These are like freaking runways for roadways. I mean, that's what that's what the algorithm is. A uh, series of choices, right? You get to the stop sign, which is where we are right now in the road, uh, red light or whatever you want to call it, and 
that's what's happening. So it's fantastic to know where these are and where the ranges are and where the channels are and where the targets are and everything else is in advance. What the one minute does for me is it confirms my ads. It confirms my entries and ads. So when it lines up with my algorithm, then you'll see me hit it. Um, so you can see um, that price is getting, by the way, right into the target area. And now, now, if anybody's in the room that doesn't understand what the hell all these lines are, this is an algorithm chart that's being coded um, for our traders. And it works. It's, in my opinion, the best one on Wall Street for oil. And I'm not the only one that says that. So uh, what this is, is this is a target that's been sitting there. All of this has been sitting there in advance. So when you chart, you chart what just happened or happened recently. Um, we're charting this in advance. And uh, so it's GPS for in advance. So this target was there in advance. Like this target was there in advance. This target was there in advance. Just missed this target. So you'll see oil kind of go from target to target and bounce around. And everything means something on this chart. So I'm just waiting for it to get up over this 200 and VWAP here, and then I'm going to hit it out of the park. And a lot of our traders would say, well, why would you wait for that? Because, you know, now's the real prime opportunity. Well, I just, you know, I'm old and I can't lose. And VAX still sitting where it was. DRWI is doing a magic trick. I don't know how it's doing this. I don't get it. It's under VWAP. I just don't get it. It's, uh, it's a magic trick. What's the volume in here? 9 million shares. I guess it's a liquidity maybe that's doing it. Well, I can't believe it hasn't just completely fallen through the floor. So oil, when it gets going, it'll really go. You see it through that 200, through that VWAP. And it gets mojo. Now, just so you know, there's two targets for each day, right? So the other target, you should know where it is. This is important. Because it's very common for it to hit both targets. So at... Um, Oh yeah, we got the EIA report to do, and we're going to start in two minutes. I've already started, see? I'm on it. I'm early today. So anyway, it can, uh, you know, spike through this one and through that one. It can also spike through one at, you know, into the next channel at the bottom, but uh, the most probable is it spikes through this one and through this one. And uh, how do we know where these targets are? Because um, Sartage is a smart guy. That's how it works. Cala, C A L A, one of our swings. And VAX has got the Momo, the tape, not the chart, the tape. The bulls are starting to come back in. DRWI, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand it. SWHI is uh, an OTC that can get going, that hasn't quite got going yet. It's up 20%, but it can really get going when it gets going. The problem with this is, um, you know, it can it can fall through the floor and like faster than you can see. So, you know, here again, I mean, all of these you got to be careful with, very careful. See, SWHI, extremely paper thin, right? DRWI, huge liquidity, nine. Well, not huge, but. 9 million shares at a buck, so, you know, 10 million has rolled through there. It's 5 million here at a buck, you know, 6 million or whatever's rolled through that. Uh, kind of gives you an idea. You take out a calculator and 
figure out three million net, you know, micro cents. It's pretty thin stuff. Hence why I like trading instruments like oil. Look at how close that is to the target. Royal Caribbean moving average alert. Man, that's been a great, great stock. Okay, so we're coming in on the target here, perfect uh, for U.S. oil. I'm going to um, just reset a few things here, and then I'm going to do the EIA charting report. And we've got the report at 10.30 this morning. And um, we'll see how close we actually are to the way. Uh, we'll see how close our charting, our future forward charting, our little crystal ball. We'll see how well it does here. Anyway, I'll be back on, on in one minute for the EIA. Okay, good morning folks. We'll get into the EIA uh, and oil charting here. Uh, just a quick heads up, uh, a few things uh, to clean up. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of um, DMs coming in, messages here intraday, and there's a lot of, uh, well there's not a lot of discussion in the room, but if I miss things in the room, just put them back in. So if you ask a question and I don't answer the question, after a few minutes, if you could, just roll it back into chat. Don't worry about uh, copying and pasting it back in there. Um, so the one question I do see right now is that, yes, what I'll do is I'll add over, um, I use the one minute oil chart uh, over the 200, which is the pink line, over the VWAP, which is the orange line. I get it to confirm my positions. I really use the algorithm. I only use this um, as a confirmation of what I'm seeing on the algorithm. Um, anyway, I'll explain that right now, but that's the answer to the question. The answer to the question is, uh, 
I'm in one tenth right now at 47.70 on CL, uh, one tenth sizing, and that's just you know, uh, I know that the intersection is here, and uh, if it confirms for me, and I'm hoping it confirms that we hit the target precisely, and you know, as far as the algorithm is concerned, this is this is already a target hit. It doesn't have to hit at 10:30 for it to be a hit, but. Um, Anyway, my point is is that I'm hoping for it to hit and actually um, possibly get into the second target too. So I'm looking for some fairly significant volatility. Uh, we can also get volatility to the downside and it could end up in that channel to the downside. So you got to be very cautious. Let things confirm. I normally don't enter before the report. One tenth is not a big deal. So I'm just going to stop following what's happening on our uh, day trading here really uh, quick and then get into oil. So everything looks pretty much the same on what I was following there. As far as oil is concerned, um, real quick, how our uh, algorithm works so you know how to do your research here. Um, and I'll make this very quick so that we can discuss the chart. But if you go to the website, compoundtrading.com, and you uh, um, scroll, put your cursor over blog, algorithmic charting reports, Epic is the first of six algorithms that we've developed. And you can click on there, and that will take you to all of Epic's reports. And you can take a look at uh, whether or not, in fact, what I'm about to tell you is true or not, because we publish everything in advance. Uh, of course, some are locked, uh, the most recent ones for our members. But as you go back, you'll be able to see. Uh, you just go over here, and you'll, you know, you'll see the different reports. So. Uh, and the other thing, too, is that Epic does have a Twitter feed, uh, Epic the Algo. And you can go there and uh, see uh, things. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we put things up to the public in in advance uh, just to show that we actually. So anyway, this is what an epic report looks like. It goes through all the charting. Uh, live charting is provided to the members. All the support and resistance for different things that I'll explain here. And uh, that's what those charts are. <clears throat> and then uh, epic's actual. Epic, let's take a look. So there's Epic, the Algo, public Twitter. So this is Epic's feed. Um, you can go there and then also on the website, um, if you're really interested in looking into Epic, uh, there's our story there, Epic story that's very detailed. Again, we publish everything in advance, and that, that'll show you uh, a little bit about my bi biography. Not much to know there, just old and good at math. And um, I have an excellent uh, partner, his name's Sartaj, for uh, the real brain work. And um, our algorithmic development process and how, how that actually comes together. Um, so those will tell you a bit of a story. It'll tell you how our algorithms are modeled around the same principles. Uh, these are not bots, right? So these aren't high frequency trading bots like you see people selling online. Uh, this is actual algorithmic models uh, where we build the model first in a two-dimensional chart for our traders. We prove it out over time. Uh, Epic is getting close to a year old now. Um, so anyway, Epic's the first of uh, six. And uh, so we model after um, this fellow here. So when you when you go to our website and it's the development process, our uh, process of modeling would be similar to this. So I would encourage you to watch the video. Uh, and this will give you an indication of the type of modeling we do or the discipline that we're involved in. And um, yeah, so that's where you find information. Um, the sales pitch, real quick, is that there's a subscription menu with a shop. If you are a commercial uh, enterprise with multi-users, we do have a platform for you, um, which is becoming more popular all the time. And um, we have uh, we have the standalone newsletters that that give you the reports. Uh, we have an, a 24-hour oil trading room starting this Monday, um, so we're early on our launch. And uh, we have another service of just live oil alerts, so you can either get just the newsletter, the 
live oil alerts or the 24-hour trading room. The commercial package uh, if you have multi-users. And if you do have multi-users, don't get a single user because you can get banned off it. And, uh, anyway, commercial license, Epic the Algo. And there's options for, I think, uh, 20, 50, and 100 users at a time, if I remember right. Uh, 10, 50, and 200 users. And, um, yeah, so anyway, you can go through that. And let's see, I'm going to buy it right now. I think there's a lot of things in my shopping cart. I think I bought a half a million dollars worth of stuff. Sorry about that. My phone's been busy this morning too. So yeah, there's for multi-users. Uh, there's of course a discount rate for multi-users. So 50 users is 60 grand a month. Okay, so let's go through the chart. Um, was that month? Yeah. Sorry, I don't even know the pricing. Uh, single user is like $119 a month, I think, after for the newsletter after a discount. Uh, single user 24-hour oil room is around three or four hundred dollars a month. Uh, the pricing in the store and stuff like that—that's Sartash's uh, thing, and I'll get trained on that one of these days here soon. Okay, so I'm going to kill these other charts real quick. And we're going to get into exactly what's happening with the oil chart. So it's now 10, 12 in the morning. For anybody new in the room, there's a couple of new people that just came in. Uh, just so you know, the snoring in the background is not me. It's my bulldog. Um, okay, so how this charting works, there's really a few different ways that we um, have this charted. One that I'm not going to show you because it would take too long. Um, there are the main way that this is used or the biggest pro most profitable way is that there are clusters of resistance and support major clusters and resistance so support at big turns if you do your research on epic you'll find that epic has hit them a hundred percent of the time and tells our members weeks in advance so that our members can really load up um, so those are clusters of resistance and support the last one which was a couple months ago that morning of when, it, when oil hit the cluster of resistance and oil really came off, uh, they were still on TV telling people to buy oil. And we were screaming from the rooftops, do not buy oil here, short oil. And so you can, you can see all that in Epic's reports. So that's the main clusters of resistance and support. That's the first part. Then the second part is that there's main support and resistance for algorithmic model uh, wide range trading ranges so right now there's one at 4750 that's the gray thick gray horizontal lines on these charts now just recently trade you know and i had a few people ask me about while trade went underneath it while trade will go underneath them um, specifically <clears throat> if it's in the quadrant so it's a range um, and they're identified by these green line or gray lines and this yellow line, and it's a decision area. But if it's partway through a quadrant like this was, and so this is the third, uh, well, actually quadrants are the fourth. I'll be careful. I won't say much about quadrants yet. So that's the main support uh, for that trading range. Now up above, there is actually the resistance. Now all this is charted in advance, right? So I can tell you where the support and the resistance is for oil 86 months in advance, 86 days or 86 years, literally without exaggeration because the model is the model. And uh, it's just a, a GPS model is the best way to explain it, uh, that oil trades through. And you'd have to do a little research to understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. So here's, you know, for this trading range, here's the resistance up here, right around the $51 mark. Now this is on FX US Oil WTI. So if you're trading CL, of course, you're going to have to do a little conversion, about three cents. And uh, we use FX US Oil WTI because the actual math to the charting was more precise. How do we get this chart? How was it developed? Long story short, there are 53 different uh, indicators that we use. 
10 different time frames. So time frames, I mean 1 minute, 3 minute, 5, 15, 30, 1 hour, uh, 1 day, those kind of time frames. So if you take your different time frames, you take 60 months back tested, and you take 53 different indicators, you have an idea of the math that we ran to get this model. So I've told you about the support, this gray line, and the resistance you see in the gray line above for the general range or wide range of trade that oil is in. Of course, there's a support underneath, you know, a fairway is underneath this, and all our members know where all those support and resistance are. They know where the big clusters are. The third thing that they also know is they know where the channels are. So you know when you, tr when you actually go and you chart uh, in conventional charting and you say, oh, there's a channel there. And I'm going to you know, go long at support and I'm going to go short at resistance. Well, our channels are actually in this charting in advance. The most important thing to understand is this is all in advance. So this isn't after the fact. So that's how conventional charting works, right? Oh, now we see a channel there. Well, we know where the channel is in advance. So this purple arrow here going that way and that purple arrow going that way and these dotted purple lines here, those dotted purple lines show the width of the channel and these purple arrows here show the direction of the channel. So what's happening with oil right now, so, and this line here is the mid, so you can picture a runway, right? And it's going up this way. This is the middle of it here. Um, that's on the chart in advance. Our, our traders know that when trade gets to where it is right now, it's either going to go up this channel or it's going to go down this channel. So here's its second choice. So the down channel, which is what it was just trading in recently, before it got into where it is now. Now it has to prove itself out. You see the intersection here where the purple arrows are? So at 1 o'clock today, 1.30 today, that's the final decision. It's got to make a decision. I'm either up in this channel or I'm down in this channel. Hence the reason why I'm only in crude oil at one-tenth size. So. Here's the downward trending channel right here. So there's one purple arrow there, and your next purple arrow is right there. So this is the width, so this is the support, and this is the resistance, and this is the midline of this runway, this down channel. So our traders know, uh, and by the way, this was the decision, you see this line here, this dotted line, this was the decision of whether or not it was going to continue down or it was going to move up. And you can see, and if you, well, here's an example. Uh, if you go to, well, you can go to my feed, uh, Kurt. Come on. He doesn't even know me, my own algo. <laughs> That's funny. You'd think it'd come up right away, wouldn't you? I don't think my algo wants to know me. Okay. So if you go to my feed, and uh, you'll see here. So here's an example. So this tweet is uh, from the alerts uh, feed, Twitter feed, um, that shows you know my live trades uh, alerted to members. And um, why am I showing you that? Well, when you go back to the chart here, and you look at this chart, you'll see what happened in recent trade. So I just got to finish this up quick because we're going to get into what's going to happen here when EIA hits. But let me give you an example of what just happened. So this is the third way that our traders make profits using the algo. So a quadrant, so we dealt with big clusters, and I didn't show you any, but you'd have to do some research on Epic's reports to see what I mean. I showed you... Uh, wide trading range. Oh, and I showed you the channels. So the fourth way is uh, what are called quadrants. So if you can picture a baseball field or a diamond, and remember I said go and check out this video here and you'll get an idea. Well, you'll see in the interview how he talks about shapes. So here's uh, a shape for you. This is a baseball field in my thinking. Some people see it as a diamond or a target. Now, the outside of this is the quadrant. So in the middle here was a time price cycle uh, target, which I'll explain in a second. That's the fifth way our traders make money. But 
I'll show you what I did when I traded this. So I knew that oil, I knew the channel was here, that, right, the downward trending channel. I knew this was the top of my resistance in the channel. So I took a trade right here for the short. And of course the short played out. And because I'm not a very good trader, I'm a much better uh, I'm much better at math than I am trading. I, you know, I, I'm weak hands and I got out somewhere in here. Well, it continued down like it, you know, like it should have. And a lot of our traders made a lot more money than I did. Um, and um, so anyway, that was a good trade and you can see it on my feed. And uh, then what happened was it got to the bottom of this channel. And, you know, like a disciplined trader that I am, I started entering in here. And then yesterday, and this this green triangle here is just to, to show it's a visual. Uh, all of this is you know, just to show the traders how it works. But anyway, I drew in this green uh, triangle here to traders yesterday when I was trading in here to show them, you know, at the end of this is a decision. And so somewhere be between, you know, where I was entering my positions and here, um, oil either had to spike out of it because before it gets to the end of this, it's got to make a decision uh, or it's going to dump out of it. And sure enough, it spiked out of it yesterday. And when it got up into here into this resistance area, of course I sold um, because again, I don't like to lose. So, you know, it goes to decision to decision. So it was at support, it was at resistance and I, I executed the trade the way I should have, but it continued up to this resistance here, this line here. Because all these lines are support and resistance, except for these dotted purple ones. The dotted purple ones are just to show you the width of the channel. Anyway, it did get up into the next resistance, so some of our traders did much better than I did. So right now, the reason why I started an, a trade here uh, long is because it's at you know a support area. Although it is an intersection, so you got to be really careful at the intersection of the of the channels, and it is where. Uh, it's not exactly wise to take a trade before uh, the EIA report because it can get very volatile. So that, I believe, was the fifth way that our traders make money. The uh, Was it the fifth? That was the fourth. The fifth way is the actual targets. So these targets are presented on the chart for, uh, for example, yesterday, Tuesday at 4.30. That target hit uh, perfectly to the exact second and penny that we provided for our traders. So the middle of that target is um, to the penny and to the second. Um, and uh, these are on the chart in advance, of course. The first target for the day yesterday at 4.30, it got into the target and then it shot up to the second. And that's very common. Um, it, it, the machines go after the two targets. That's how it works. Uh, for the machines, it's home. Uh, they look at it, okay, at Tuesday at 4.30, I go, got to go home. Wednesday at 10.30, I got to go home. And Friday at 1 o'clock, I got to go home. And um, so they just take trade to the targets. And what we do is we provide two targets for each of the time uh, frames or channels that trade will be in. Uh, so I think I covered all, because I got to get into the charting and what could happen here. I think I covered all the ways. So clusters are number one, most important. Number two, uh, wide time frames. So that's this gray di our horizontal line. And, you know, so you support and main support and uh, resistance. Then I covered the actual uh, channels. Wow, half an hour is hard to get through uh, all this information. So here's the support of the channel. Here's the resistance of the channel. These purple arrows show what direction the channel goes in, and these dotted purple arrows show the width of the channel. Um, and then don't forget, there's a decision, there's an intersection. We're at it right now uh, where it can go up channel or down channel. Um, and then I showed you quadrants. And also, just so you know, these quadrants, this is all support and resistance. So our traders uh, not only will trade the wide quadrant, but you see, if you look, there's smaller quadrants. So there's a quadrant here. And by, by the way, this is the 30 minute chart. Every time frame has these quadrants. So you can go down to real tight time frames or wider type uh, time frames. We trade on the 30 minute because it's, it's the most predictable for us. Um, and you can see how trade handles, you know, so here's a resistance line, gets up, you know, it hits it, gets down to a support line, uh, boom, it goes through and it falls. Uh, so just picture like walls, like um, like this is actually, you know, like a ball going through and bouncing between these different resistance and supports. Oh, and I forgot to mention the, the horizontal lines, the various ones that you see, those are all conventional, traditional horizontal 
uh, support and resistance except for this gray one here. The gray one is completely algorithmic. It's an algorithmic uh, modeling uh, calculation. It has nothing to do with conventional charting other than it's used 53 different indicators of conventional charting in history to get that number. So hopefully all that made sense. If not, you can always watch the video after this is done. So these are examples of support and resistance from a conventional charting perspective, the red, the blue, the purples. Uh, these are actually Fibonacci lines. The purples are um, uh, con uh, conventional from previous trade. So we're four minutes-ish from the EIA report. Here's what you need to watch for. So I'm in one-tenth right in and around where it's trading right now. Um, I'm hoping that I get a spike. If I get a spike, I'm going to hit a long position, so i got to be ready here. And once it, if it does get into this target above, I'm going to exit my position very quickly. Um, if it tanks underneath there, then I will very likely short, but you got to be really careful around EIA time. The actual intersection isn't until 1.30. That's at, well, it's at 1. It's at one o'clock, sorry. So sometime before one o'clock, oil's got to make a decision to go up that channel or down. So you won't see me get too aggressive around when the report comes out here in three minutes, minutes or so. Uh, uh, what I will get aggressive on is when you know one o'clock comes and it confirms up this channel or down this channel. And the final note that you need to know is that it is possible for it to go sideways. Epic hasn't missed one of these channels yet, but it, we're aware of the fact that there is the option that it'll just pop into the, you know another channel over here, and that can happen. And then you know that what'll happen is um, uh, new charting would go to the members and it would show them where the new channel is. And the members know how this works now, so they could most of them could figure out you know okay here's my new channel that I'm trading in my new decisions. Um, there is there is more, but you know a lot time frame and a lot of I can't, can't share with you because of course uh, respecting our members and and uh, making sure that they keep their edge. So we're a couple minutes from the report here so I'm going to check in and see what uh, is happening with uh, the OOT people and see if I can't get a little inf early information. Wow, thanks, by the way, to the folks that are um, giving me kudos online and stuff. Really appreciate it. Everybody likes a pat on the back. Keeps you motivated when you're burning the midnight hour. Okay, we're getting, we're getting ready for some volatility here. How far are we away? A minute and 40 seconds. So I'm just going to come in on this chart a little bit so we get a little more of a close up. I was asked if I can magically uh, manipulate the price of oil to get into these targets, and uh, just for the record, I cannot do that. Okay, we're 40 seconds away. seconds. 
Pressure there right before. Here it goes. Boom. Oh, it went down. Wow. It's in the lower channel. So I got stopped out, obviously. Oh, I went and sizing. Okay, we can wait on the Google report and the Royal Caribbean. So you'll see equities start to respond to this. I gotta bring it out here. Let's go and see where the targets are down below. Okay, so oil's trading right here at 46.88. So the target down below is at the cross right here. It's just not showing. So it's going for this right here. There's one here and there's one here. So where the time, you see the vertical line, the green vertical line, and the uh, uh, the algorithm. Uh, diagonal line uh, where they meet is where the target is so I'm going to clone a target here and I'm going to bring it down to show you where it is oh it just went through it and it's going for the one below so there would be a target here and our members know this of course that have been around for any amount of time and there will be another one down below and you'll notice that the size of these targets are important. Oil will use uh, the outside of the targets as support and resistance. So what I'll do is, <laughs> so it went through that target, crashed. Now the equities are going to have a hard, really hard time here, boy. I'm going to look for a long position here on the snap. Because, you know, we're in the lower channel now. But first I'm going to come in on this chart a bit and see what's going on. So that's where those two targets would be. So I hope I may, I explained that right. But it's where time so crosses the diagonal. I had somebody DM me uh, there about, uh, so you lost on your trade? Yeah, I lost on my trade. One tenth sizing, tiny. That's why you don't do it before this. I, can, I mean, I can't even tell you which direction it's going to go up or down. I can just tell you where the targets are. Wow, that was serious. That's probably the most serious downdraft we've seen. That's probably an absolute anomaly. Like when we run the math on this, I bet you this is an anomaly for downdraft at EIA report. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move over here off the algorithmic chart. So this is a conventional one-minute chart. I just want to get a feel for what oil's doing here because I'm going to end up taking a trade. I'm hoping it gets down to the bottom. See this here? This is this is where the wall of the channel is. It'd be perfect if it got down there and take a long because now it's on the downward trending channel, right? Now there are some FIB supports right underneath, but it's probably not going to get past this wall of this. You see this this circle here is a, a target uh, support and resistance. It probably did it get down that low. What is that? Forty? Yeah, it hit it hit right there, and now it's bouncing up. It probably won't get through there, but if it does, these are FIB lines here, so those are support. And then here's the channel wall, the downward channel wall. This is kind of like the first decision, and here's the absolute decision right down in the bottom left-hand corner. But it's used the target uh, perimeter as support so far. And you'll find that these targets are not, uh, like the size of them is not by coincidence. So we'll see how this does here. Oh, if it comes through the bottom of that, it's going to the fib next. There it goes. Oh, 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 oh there it goes. See how how uh, violent it, it got when it lost it. Now it's at the fib. Now the fibs at support. It bounced off the fib. 
it loses that fib and then it's the next fib here and then it's this diagonal quadrant wall here on the intraday that's a 30 minute quadrant here holy 3.74 percent This is massive. Okay, now it's check. It's oh, oh, it's through there. So here's a conventional support and resistance. These purple. Then those are thin. Like the thicker the line, the more. Oh, yeah, see, it just blew through that one, no problem. Now it's coming to the quad wall. Wow, this is amazing. Just totally geeking out here, eh? Just nerd central. But you know. This is this is crazy what's happening right now. This is not normal. So did it get down to the algo wall here? Forty five ninety one, just above it. Now you'll find these algo walls, the, these are the most important support and resistance that you'll see on the chart. Except for the major clusters and the wide time frames. But the algo support and resistance, what whichever one you're looking at, are the important ones. These horizontal uh, conventional charting are not important. I mean, they're there just, you know, to help our traders, but they, you know, oil will slice through them like nothing. It's the algo uh, lines, and the thinner the line, the least, you know, less important it is. But it's in oil, it's the diagonal uh, algo lines that are really important. So it got down to that uh, algo uh, wall there, and now it's bouncing up. And that might be it. Wow, my DMs are just going nuts here. Okay. See, it's coming up. See how it hit that diagonal wall? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it out a little bit so I can get an idea of my algorithm where we're sitting. So where we're sitting, this is the top of the downward channel. 